Yeah, it was good. Another day, another video. Alright, today, we'll just get into it because it's kind of a continuation of the last video I posted like a few days ago. Um, about the types of money. So we'll just talk about, um, we went over commodity and representative money already. So in this video, we're going to talk about um, the electronic money. And those two types of money are probably going to be more familiar to you, just seeing as most societies today run on either fiat money and to be honest, most things are electronic money these days, but each one kind of builds on the other. So even knowing the last two, the last two types of money from the last video will help you understand these next two types of money. And then we'll go, because that blue ticket legit won. Like, and I'm in America, so that Biden-Harris ticket legitimately won, so like, we'll keep going with that blue. Um, Alright, cool. I'll just put on. You know, I'll kind of go the same way that I did last time. So I'll just, I'm not going to review, like, but I'll just write fiat on this whiteboard right now, because I'll talk about them one by one. But first, we're going to review commodity money, representative money. So, remember that commodity money was basically a valuable good in this society. Like, it was a good that had intrinsic value on its own, but then it was just convenient to be used as money because it could be broken down, um, divisible. Uh, that will probably be the next be about the characteristics, like fungibility, divisibility, etc., reproducibility. Um, but commodity money was used because it was basically a valuable, convenient good. So like gold, silver, diamond, think about those as examples. Um, and representative money was basically just paper currency that represented specific quantities of the valuable commodity that was usually stored at, um, they call it the issuer, like so the issuer of the paper currency would usually be the person or place where the valuable commodity was stored, so a bank for example would store gold and they would issue paper currency that represented that gold. So if you had a certain paper note, like let's say 10, I don't know, dollars or whatever it happened to be, like you could redeem that in gold. So you could redeem that value, of like $10, like maybe it's silver dollars or whatever. Like you could get that quantity of the, the gold or silver back, whatever um, the paper was representing. And you know, this could even be like tobacco or some other commodity that was valuable in the society. But usually it was, you know, it was gold, like gold standard or like silver, um, etc. And yeah, it's representative. Yeah, now we're gonna talk about fiat money. So, fiat money has no intrinsic value, which is important. Nor can it be redeemed directly for any, any specific quantity of a valuable commodity. So, it has no intrinsic value, which makes it different from commodity money, and it can't be redeemed for, it can be redeemed directly for something that has intrinsic value, if that makes sense. So fiat money is kind of more of a trading tool and it works better for like a service economy as you'll um, find interesting that the US kind of moved more toward the service economy when we switched from representative money to fiat money in the 70s. Um, so, so the value of fiat money 
or fiat currency, now you can kind of use them interchangeably, right? Like, so, so money and currency kind of becomes the same when you move to a fiat system because um, you could make arguments, but at that point, you can make arguments, oh, is the currency money? But at that point, like, whatever is current, like, whatever um, you're passing on as the paper, that actually is the money. So, like, when you have, like, a paper that says, oh, $10, you actually have $10 now. And and why why is that allowed, right? Like, it doesn't have to be backed by gold anymore or silver. And how is that legitimate, right? You would ask if you weren't. I get, or I mean, if you were interested, or thought it didn't make sense, I think I wrote on the back of my whiteboard. Even though I didn't, you would ask, how, how is that legitimate? Economic and, and personal freedom. So we'll talk about that. So, the so the value of element, fiat currency originates from government decree, i.e., fiat. That's what's. We must protect the That's position of the American currency. dollar the value as a pillar is there because of monetary the stability decreed. around the world. In the past seven years, there's been an average of one international monetary crisis every year. Now, who gains from these crises? Not the working man, not the investor, not the real producers of wealth. The gainers are the international money speculators. Because they thrive on crises, they help to create them. In recent weeks, the speculators have been waging an all-out war on the American dollar. The strength of a nation's currency is based on the strength of that nation's economy. And the American economy is by far the strongest in the world. Accordingly, I have directed the Secretary of the Treasury to take the action necessary to defend the dollar against the speculators. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets, except in amounts and conditions determined to be in the interest of monetary stability and in the best interest of the United States. Um, and how do they, and, you know, anyone can, a government is technically representative of this society. If you have a representative government like the U.S. does in many countries around the world do. So technically this society decrees it and the government attempts to tightly control production of the fiat money, just like how the issuer attempts to control the production of the paper currency that, um, that in a representative money system, it's kind of the, the government is the issuer in a fiat system of the paper currency. So they try to tightly control the production of it. And they, they do this by using printing methods and materials that are difficult for any one person to reproduce or any group of people that aren't connected to the central authority to reproduce. And the people or groups that are actually clever enough to or um, criminal enough would probably be the better word, but if you're interested enough to actually reproduce the paper currency, if they're able to do that, they're punished. So you try to punish the people who are reproducing it and then tightly control their production. Um, yeah, and then the US has had different they've had a we've had a fiat money system for a few like actually a while now long before i was born um yeah and i say been using since off the gold standard in the 70s and then you know there's uh various policies now that you have fiat money how do you control the supply you have monetary policy and fiscal policy which that's huge topic right so we'll probably get into it in a different video but um like just the basics of it because like an economics class kind of thing okay my next bullet 
people will use fiat money only if they believe that it can be used in the future and that it will not lose value. Okay, so you, so the people of the society, which you know, the government is supposed to represent, so fiat money, they'll only use the fiat money if um, they have confidence that they can use it later, like far in the future, and um, that it will not lose value, which is a little bit funny when you bring inflation and deflation into the into the picture, but it's more of like a relative thing. So, on a, in a fiat system, just uh, given the tools of monetary policy, it's almost inevitable, and the fact that it's not backed by anything, anything that has intrinsic value, like gold or silver, because the paper itself, you know, how much can you do with that paper, you know, um, like physically, really. If you think about it, what can you do with paper that's already been manufactured and t to to look like a like a dollar bill or something? You know, what do you, what can you do with a dollar bill? Like throw it in a fireplace, um, like use it as like you know paper to wash your hands or something. You know, um. You can't put it into jewelry necessarily, or at least you can't put it into durable jewelry or or durable silverware, as the term is called silverware. You know, it's not paperware, and that kind of sounds stupid, but you know, I mean, it's not called goldware either, right? But, uh, you know, but you get the point. Like, what are you gonna use it for? Um. So yeah, people will only use it if they believe they can use it in the future and if it will if they believe that it will not lose value. Yeah. Um and that's actually all the bullet points I have for fiat money. Yeah, this will be a quicker video, but yeah, I guess that's just kind of interesting. What are some important things just no. Oh shit, man. Damn peachy black gangsters are at it again. I wonder who they fucked up today. You Got him. This is legal tender for all of debts, public and private, which means you can use that paper to pay off debts, or that electronic money that we'll talk about later to pay off debts. So that's a big thing, right? Like if you're indebted to somebody for some other reason, like you don't even, it doesn't have to even involve the paper. You can do have a real world transaction and then abstract the value of that transaction on the paper. So you could say, hey, like you could gamble essentially. Like, hey, if this team wins, or you know, if I beat you in this little game of one on one, um, that's worth ten dollars. You know, you could say, and get that as long as you have the paper right there. You know, you you can just make that transaction, like just because, just off of that, 
um, paper, like so, so public, that would be like a maybe a private debt that you can absolve with that paper. So that real world transaction, you have, no, you just have the paper. And that is valuable on its own, like through what the government has done with monetary policy. That's why it's valuable, right? Um, that person doesn't doesn't expect to be able to go to the bank and pick up a certain amount of gold because he won that game. He just expects to get that paper from you. And then because other people are using that same paper as currency, he now can use that in order to go to the marketplace pretty much. So in the fiat system, the money itself kind of becomes more of a part of the marketplace than it, than it used to be as representative current than it was as representative currency because you would have to I mean you'd have to find more of the valuable commodity whereas now you kind of use market forces in your society to or around the world depending on how you want to define your society you use those forces to regulate how much currency you have, how much currency in terms of like the paper is in the system and that can determine how people do their transactions if that makes sense. Um, and inflation and deflation, like we'll talk about that in another video. But yeah, so government decrees its value through Law, I'll say. Laws and regulations. And that's why people get, you know, happy or nervous when the government says they want to regulate a certain industry or whatever the case may be. And remember, the government's supposed to be representative of the people of the society. So, um, let's try not to separate government from the people, even though that's a lot of people do that with good reason, but technically government's supposed to be representative of the society. Government is representative. So that's fiat money. Good stuff on fiat money.